This video is sponsored by Raycon, more on that later. Hi, happy Monday. Cinema, the smell of buttery popcorn in the air and the sound of film bros sitting behind you in the theater whispering about the Bechdel test. That's a film reference. What's better than cinema, guys? Come on. But what happens when it's all over? When the credits roll? Do you just sit there like some kind of boulder from the movie Shrek where Donkey says, that's a nice boulder. <laughs> That's another film reference for you film heads out there. I always thought it was funny when I'd come across headlines that say stuff like, George Miller's visual feast, 3,000 years of longing, earns six minute standing ovation in Cannes. Or something like, Joker gets eight minute standing ovation at Venice premiere. Or maybe, uh, Quentin Tarantino's new film got a seven minute applause at Cannes. That's actually not that good. Which as a headline doesn't really make that much sense, but this specific standing ovation wasn't really notable because of the length of the standing ovation. It was more just because of how cringe it was. Now, movie fans are probably familiar with this genre of headline where we praise a movie not because of the actual reception of the film, but just because of how awkwardly long the standing ovation is. And headlines like this are often made fun of because of how absurd it is to imagine people standing up and clapping for that long. There are films that had standing ovations at festivals that lasted over 20 minutes. So naturally, after seeing so many of these, I had just one burning question. Does the length of the standing ovation at a film festival actually have any correlation? with how good the film is. Just because Paperboy got a 15 minute standing ovation at Cannes Film Festival doesn't mean that the audience or the critics are even gonna really like it. But if we actually pull back and take a look at some of the most talked about films at film festivals, is there any way we can predict how long people might stand and clap for? Well, luckily for me, Sid, my writer, decided to put together a little game for you and me on this beautiful Monday so we can decide once and for all if standing ovations have any sort of insight or value into a film's success at all. It's time for us to play Standing O's or Standing O No's. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to this game show that I am maybe the host of. I'm more of the contestant, but I feel like I'm sort of a host also. Sid is in chat and she's going to help us out because she created the game. But I say let's just dive in to the first ever game of Standing O's or Standing Oh No's, the game. Sid, when you put the game at the end, you're insinuating that there are other mediums of Standing O's and Standing Oh No's. Where's Standing O's and Standing Oh No's the movie? Ah, it sucks when there's no one to laugh at my jokes. You know what I'm saying? It feels so weird being back at home and filming videos on my own. Okay, I see you're all laughing at me in chat now. I think Riley's in the chat, so maybe he could throw us some funny things every now and then get in every now and again just to Give us like, give us a rhythmic flow. Esteemed guest, welcome Nick and friends. That's you guys. As we all know, people love to clap. I'm actually clapping right now. That doesn't make a lot of sense. One of the best places to find such applause is a film festival where directors, actors, and writers alike join it together in a beautiful circle jerk of cinema. But how well do you know your applause? Okay, here's the rules of the game, everybody. Your task is to guess how long a film's standing ovation was at the film festival where it premiered. If you correctly guess six or more, guesses may be within one minute, okay? So if you're in one minute, if I guess five minutes of standing ovation, that means that if it's four or six, I'm good. You will be rewarded with a 10 minute standing ovation from me. If I correctly guess six or more, that means Sid has to give us a 10 minute standing ovation. However, if I get five or less correct, I must attend a movie at a crowded theater and applaud. Why? No, I don't want to do that. It's so I can make it be any amount of, of numbers. It's just randomly guessing. Okay, so if I get five or less correct, I have to attend a movie at a crowded theater and applaud a movie of my choosing for 10 minutes or longer if I liked it that much. I don't want to do that at all. Also, Sid was like, well, I, there's something that happens to me too if you if you do well, so I want you to lose. But the thing she has to do is not hard at all. She just has to stand there and do a 10 minute standing ovation. Why do I not have to do that? It should have just been like, I have to upload a 10 minute video of me doing a standing ovation but i love a good game okay so i'm gonna play it what am i gonna do change the rules you think you can go on uh what's what's any game show called you think you could go on uh, guess the <laughs> 
what? You think you can go on deal or no deal and just tell the deal maker what the deal is going to be? You know what I'm saying? Uh, anyways, we'll try it. Number one, Elvis 2022. Director Baz Luhrmann. This movie is two hours and 40 minutes long, which means that, th that they've already been there for a while. Sid's calling me. All right, what's going on? You're messing it up. Look, I'm messing it up. How am I messing it up? You have to go back. You didn't. <laughs> I just totally didn't. I just totally skipped down <laughs> on the last part. Oh, I'm so stupid. Dude, I just got stuck on the fact that I know I'm gonna lose the game. But I guess I do have okay, I have lifelines. I'm stupid. But okay, thank you for thank you for warning me. <laughs> Okay, bye. I can't believe I started the game. Okay, just pretend that didn't happen. You will be given various information regarding the film, such as its title, the poster, the runtime, oh, the audience score, the critic score, and the festival it premiered at. However, this information is not sufficient. You will have three lifelines that you can use once each. Here's the three lifelines. One, a letterboxed review. Two, a video review from Sid, or I can call any friend of my choosing to help me. Can I call my friend and then be like, hey, can you look up how many minutes were applauded at this movie and Sid is the chat allowed to like am I allowed to see what the chat thinks they can't look it up so you guys can't look it up but you guys can guess Elvis it premiered at Cannes the audience score is a 94 on Rotten Tomatoes but the critic score is only a 77 I remember seeing the headline for this a lot of people are saying in chat anywhere from 5 to like 13 minutes is like the range we're getting I think it was like somewhere from like 12 to 16 is what I remember. Someone does 22 minutes. Think, just imagine one minute of standing ovations. Stop, dude. dude. What did what did Riley say? Here to add fun facts throughout. Did I, Riley say anything yet? Elvis was played by Mike from Stranger Things. <laughs> People are saying 12. I feel like it could be 14 though. So I'm gonna go 13. 13's my guess. Lock in your answers. Let's go! I, I was one away. I get it. I get a silly little point. Imagine giving a standing ovation for 12 minutes. That's so long. That's like a whole ass like Chad Chad video. The whole time. You're just like... I guess we're gonna see how weird it is when Sid has to do it. Because there's no way I'm gonna let myself lose this. Next question. Don't worry, darling. It just came out. Director Olivia Wilde. The runtime was two hours and three minutes, which we have already learned has nothing to do correlation to standing ovations because Elvis was almost three hours and they clapped for so long. So maybe if it's lower, yes. If it's lower, people in the chat are hearing me. It has to be lower. I cannot imagine something like Don't Worry, Darling getting a 12 minute or it's gotta be around five. Audience scores. 77 critics was 38. Can I say there's no standing ovation? I'm gonna assume there is one if it's in the game. It would be kind of a cheap shot if there was none, but they're not, I don't think they'd show it if it got like less than five. People are all, all saying three, four, five, six, seven. I'm thinking just go five. Five to eight final answer. You don't get a five to eight final answer. I'm gonna go five. Yes! I'm a monster. I'm two for two. It's no big deal. Now, <laughs> why is Pan's Labyrinth on here? See, this is what I'm wondering now. We're gonna have to start playing my games with Sid, okay? Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro. He's about to come out with a new Pinocchio movie this year. Came out in 2006. Two hours long. About the same as Don't Worry Darling. So maybe, maybe 16 years later, there's a correlation in the runtime and this also got five minutes. A lot of people are in the teens for this one. It was at Cannes. And if we know anything about Cannes, so Venice, Venice was short. Cannes was longer. We're mixing. We're mixing. Cannes was longer and this movie did this well. I feel like it has to be high. But but I am going to do a lifeline and look at the letterbox review that I am provided for Pan's Labyrinth. So I only get one lifeline of each, but you provided all these cool little things. So I feel like you would agree with me and say that we should just let me do more. You know what I'm saying? If I had eyes on my hands, I'd do some crazy shit. What is it? This doesn't tell me anything. This is like, that was a bad lifeline. I feel like I could guess this one. This is a thriller. I feel like it has to be lower, Derek is saying. Okay, so if it's a thriller, I feel like you're right. It may have to be lower. People are above 10 though. And it was long ago. That's my thing. I'm playing the mind game. It was in 2006. So I think I will go higher. I'm feeling like 16. Final answer. 
16. Wow, what? How would I ever guess that? We need a multiple choice. We should add multiple choice for this. This game is so unfair. It's random numbers. How, who was standing there for 22 minutes? Number four, Dune. Dune, big movie last year. I feel like I'm so scared because I don't want to lose. But I know I'm going to. There's nothing I can do about it. Movie was two and a half hours. We know that Venice is the one that Don't Worry Darling was at. The standing ovation was shorter there. And this was already a highly anticipated movie. So I'm thinking like eight or nine, maybe. But it could be anything. Like all these lifelines are useless. Because if I call a friend, it's the same thing. They're just guessing around. Everyone's saying 11. Riley's saying 10. I trust Riley. I, well, is that phone a friend if I just pick Riley's answer in chat? <laughs> Does that count? I mean, I'm like basing it off of the rest of chat though. If he picked some random one. Audience score has to be a big part of it, you think? But aren't there more crazy? Critics at this film festival though but how is the audience score good audience score here mid audience score yeah dude the good audience score that has that's that's correlation too my guess is there's no correlation in any of this but i'd say high audience score means high Venice possibly means low. Runtime doesn't mean anything. Sid said I'll allow it. I mean, I guess I'm just picking a number, so. Everyone's saying 11. What if it's nine though? <laughs> and then Riley said 10. But I'm just saying that because it's like film, like film snobs, you know? So I feel like it'd be closer to the critic score, but also the critic score is always wildly off. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 11. I'm gonna go with the gut chat. It's eight. Oh, I would have been one off if I picked. Oh! I don't want to go to the movie and do a standing ovation for 10 minutes. It's going to be so embarrassing. Everyone's going to hate me and I'm not going to be cool. Anymore. Remember these gross things? Wired headphones. Yeah, get those out of here. I'm here today to talk about the sponsor of this video, Raycon. Listen, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. If you're looking for headphones that fall within your budget and still have good quality, Raycons are the ones for you. Raycon's everyday earbuds have optimized gel tips so you can actually go along with your day without them falling out and embarrassing you in front of everybody. You're never gonna be embarrassed. I also love the everyday earbuds awareness mode so I can actually hear what's going around when I'm walking outside rather than feeling like I can't hear anything because I have headphones in my ears. They offer eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life so you know you can walk around with them however long you want and they're not just gonna die on you in the middle of a work day. And also when you get home, you'll still have time to watch some of my videos. And these earbuds are like half the price of other premium audio brands so you can buy good headphones without spending everything you got. But don't just take it from me, Raycon's everyday ear Earbuds have over 51,000 five-star reviews. So if you want to join me and get some of these bad boys in your ear, go to buyraycon.com slash nickgreen for 15% off your purchase. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the fun. <sighs> okay, Black Klansman. Great movie. Came out in 2018. Spike Lee. Runtime. 214. Premiered at Cannes. They love doing long. And Critic Score is 96. They love... This could be long. But also, it could not be. People are all saying 15. They're all higher than 15 at least. But it was recent too. Can't be more than 22. Yeah, at least we have a cap for that. Can't be more than 22. My gut's telling me 16. I feel like it might be too high though. A lot of white people at the film festival and they would not feel comfortable sitting down right away. <laughs> Because they, if they don't sit down, then that means they don't fuck with it. Or if they do sit down, that means they don't fuck with it. So I'm actually going to go... I'll, I'm going to say 18. No, I'm going to go back down to 16. I got to stick with my gut. 16. Final answer. No! This game is useless. Why do we not have multiple choice on this? Sid, you should have tested. Did you ever test people with this? Put a test audience to this crap? I just realized the standing ovation time has just been how many letters are in the title. You're right. 5, 10, 14. No. <sighs> and Dune would have had 4, but it has eight so that's times two punishment's too hard <laughs> i don't want to do that <laughs> next up blonde heard blonde is bad and it well, apparently was bad four percent audience score 44 percent critic score it was at venice they don't clap a lot there and it was also two hours and 46 minutes and it just came out i yeah i feel like it's maybe gotta be two or three three seems like a good one final answer three i'm gonna kill myself in a video game i didn't mean that <sighs> What am I, how am I supposed to be, how, what am I gonna do? Maybe the crowded theater could be my living room. Just invite a bunch of friends over and then I could stand there and clap for 10 minutes. <sighs> Sid says no. I could just fire her. <laughs> 
Oh, but seriously, I am taking $5 an hour from your wage. You were going to be suspended for a week from working from me. Parasite, one of my favorite movies ever. Came out in 2019, directed by Bong Joon-ho. It was two hours and 12 minutes. It was at the Cannes Film Festival. Obviously a great audience and critic score with 90%, 99%. If you know, this is one of the movies I've actually seen. Is this the first movie I've actually seen on this list? And the ending's great, which means that it should hit hard. So I'm gonna say, it could just be any number. It really could. It's literally just the vibe of the room and who decides to sit down. Like it's, I can't have anything to do with anything. I'm gonna go 17. It's a rigged game. It's like I'm trying to shoot three pointers. Doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Like, what do I do? How do I win? So far, I have two out of seven, and I have to get six. Eight, nine, ten. I lost already. Call me by your name. What? Um, let me just fart out an answer, okay? Um, 86%, 94%, two hours, 12 minutes long. Sundance Film Festival. They don't like clapping at the Sundance Film Festival, I'll tell you that. Let's do a lifeline here because God knows what this could be. Let's ask Sid what she thinks about uh, Call Me By Your Name, okay? <laughs> Go ahead and tell us. Hey guys, Sid here, back with another film review for <laughs> Nick, but you will only be seeing one of these, so I guess not back with, just I'm here now. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about the movie Call Me By Your Name. Uh, I have How is this going to tell us what, how long um, the it's standing the ovation is? I bought a VPN so that I could watch it because it was only on Italian Netflix at the time. Um, I think it's great, obviously, not without its flaws. Um, <laughs> this could be any I mean, movie. the predatory character comes with the movie. And obviously, he's a bit more predatory now that we know he's a cannibal. But, uh, yeah, no, this, this movie is, like, very visually stunning. Um, I love... The like Italian countryside vibe. What and is this supposed if I were to, to stand tell up and me? Clap, I'd clap for the same amount of minutes that everyone <gasps> else did. So. Oh. Bye. I you didn't tell me anything. I'm gonna say that this movie has um, I don't know 12. Just throw any number out there. It doesn't matter. Lost. I lost. I was two away. Sid, if I get these last two in a row, it's my channel. I get to say I get to say whatever I want. If I get these last two, then we call it even, and I don't have to do anything, and you don't have to do anything. It's a wash. It's official. <sighs> Here we go. I have one lifeline left and you can call a friend. Number nine, Top Gun Maverick. Just came out this year, directed by Joseph Kosinki. A lot of people liked this movie. A lot of people. I did not see it. It was at Cannes Film Festival a little over two hours long and everyone loved it. But is this the kind of movie that would get a standing ovation? Everyone's saying so high, but I just feel like it's a Top Gun movie. So I'm almost like, would people even clap? Sid says if I get one of these, she'll give it to me, which makes me think it could be zero minutes. Because what if she's saying if you get one of them? Because she knows she knows I'm not going to get the one that's zero minutes. Because what if they just watch Top Gun and they just left? It's Top Gun. It's like, who's going to give it a standing ovation? Maybe I'll do one minute. Top Gun is the easy one. How am I supposed to know that? Sid said no trick questions. Okay, okay. I'm just going to have to guess. I, maybe I will go high up. Because Tom, Tom Cruise was probably there. Was he at the film festival? I'm going to say 18. 18? Is 18 crazy? <laughs> You guys let me down. You guys got in my head. I knew it was low. I would have still lost. So if I just get this one, then I don't have to do anything. You should have called me. I was going to say five. Well, I could have done that for any question. I have to call someone on this one. Should I call you, Riley? Do you want to get the call? Do you know a lot about the movie Shrek? <laughs> Oh God. Okay. Shrek. You guys know Shrek. Came out in 2001. I gotta call someone who knows it. Director was Andrew Adamson and Vicky Jensen. It was about an hour and a half long. Cannes Film Festival. 90% audience, 88% critic score. But do I know how long the standing ovation was? Call video and letterboxd you can do all three i'm allowed to do all three okay sid's really throwing me a bone here so i'll end with the call where i can decide first so i may have made a mistake i was trying to click <laughs> the next i have an idea <laughs> i was trying to click i was trying to click to the next slide and i i spoiled myself <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to look at the letterbox review and show you guys. I'm going to show you guys Sid's review and then I'm going to call Riley. And whatever Riley picks, since it was just his birthday, he's going to guess for me and give me the final pick. Watch the French dub with English subtitles, black and white. Actually, we probably shouldn't put this on here. I heard it's like a predator. <laughs> 
We're gonna skip the Letterboxd review, only because I'm pretty sure he's a bad person. But we're gonna watch Sid's review of it. Hey guys, Sid here, coming to you with a final review. Woo! Well, it's not final if you're watching this one, because it would mean that you only watch this one. However, I made Liar. 10 videos. So if you want Nick to show you those, uh, he probably won't. I don't know. He said that I'm not allowed to have any screen time other than like when it's absolutely necessary. And he also said that if I say any of this, he's going to like fire me and like whatever, like dox me and stuff. No, so I wouldn't say that. Uh, but Shrek, yeah, no, Shrek is amazing. Obviously, I feel like I feel like there's no review necessary for Shrek. It's Shrek. It's a great movie. It was, I learned a fun fact. It is actually the first animated movie, I think, to premiere at Cannes Film Festival since 1953, following Peter Pan. So we got a little, got a little trivia. That's a good, cool fact. Over here. Um, so do that what you will. I don't know. Like, if you needed the video review from me for shrek yeah i know i you you might be out of luck buddy you might start clapping i'm out of now. luck for any of these bye the, the review doesn't tell me anything we haven't learned much she gave a hint at the end 1954 first one since 1954 let's call riley Talk to me. Every time I talk to R Riley, I say our dog talked to me when I get on the phone with him, but he beat me to it. Or just our face and nothing else. I like our face more because it sounds like Scarface. Like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Our face talked to me. That probably got a huge standing ovation. Um, <laughs> Everyone's in their living room standing up. Um, all right. So Shrek. Uh, thing you got to consider is, do you know what the closing scene of Shrek is? It's a uh, dance. A, a musical number to close, the song. Close, Nick. Close. It's a wedding. Okay, it's a musical number at a wedding where they all sing. Is it I'm a Believer? I'm a Believer. I, I can believe it. Yeah, that's going to inspire some standing and some ovationing. How so much? That's a, that's a big part of it. Please. I also feel like there may be some snobby critics there who don't want to stand that long for a cartoon animated movie. The first one at the festival since 1954 or whatever. But you know what they say, it's not ogre until all the critics stand and clap. Um, <laughs> shoot. Um, uh, there's, there's a few things going through my head. I have like an educated guess, like I have like my idea of a guess, but I also could just say whatever Please, and, make you, and make you go to a movie theater and clap for 10 minutes. I know, minutes. dude, but I need I've this. never had so much power. I really need this. Let's add stakes to this one. I'll give my best guess if you take me out for stakes at Dave & Buster's. Fine. You have a deal. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 11 minutes. 11's your final answer. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. It was 10 minutes. You got it right. <laughs> yes. I don't have to do it. Mwah, 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 mwah. Riley and I are making out now because we finished, and I'm gonna take him out to dinner for steaks at Dave and Buster's. Go, we're going to Dave and Buster's finally. And go to Hive Mind on YouTube to watch the video that I made with them. It's very funny. And that's Hank, Riley's dog. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. I can't believe that after all of the changes we made to the game, I won. And I don't have to give any sort of satisfying finish to the video. I can just be done here. Thanks for playing. Riley says we can hit the theater together after D and B's. That's Dave and Buster's for you guys back at home. Okay, to everybody in chat, put in chat how many answers you got right out of 10. We have a two, a one, a two, a three, a lot of zeros, a, a three, five, one, two, five, two. Seems like everyone got around three or four. So I think Sid actually messed up the game because the average should be just under six. Can't believe we got the first two right. And then it was just downhill from there. Derek said he got all 10 of them because his title trick worked. What's the one that had the longest title? Top Gun Maverick, six, eight, 12, 14, 16, five. <laughs> I feel like I should have a punishment. It just shouldn't be as harsh. Maybe I should just do the 10 minute standing ovation in, in my own room. This is what I'll do. Since I lost, I'll put Sid's channel 
<laughs> on my hand. Since we shot that video, Sid actually has put out a really awesome video essay on Marvel, so you should go check out her channel. I'm gonna link the video in the description down below. So obviously we have learned today that there's no correlation between a film's reception and the length of the standing ovation at the premiere. Now Sid is like a silly little film major something, and she has a lot of friends that went to the Cannes Film Festival because her university has a study abroad program there. And from the little insight we have into the world, apparently standing ovations are completely at the discretion of the directors and actors for each film and the whole process is extremely orchestrated so basically how it works is that when the film's over people start clapping and then a cameraman will show the director on screen and when it feels like the applause is starting to die down the camera will just sort of pan to another person that was in the movie like one of the main actors or actresses and then the applause just kind of starts up again and so they can kind of go on for however long they want this kind of helps me understand how the standing ovations just get to the length that they are because when you have like a bunch of people clapping and then you cut to someone else it's hard for everyone to be like well let's just sit down now so for a director like Baz Luhrmann who directed Elvis and the Great Gatsby his style is very like over the top and glamorous so that's probably why it got like a 12 minute standing ovation because he wanted it to but on the other hand you have someone like Bong Joon-ho who ended his standing ovation after eight minutes because in his words his actors were hungry <laughs> So it seems to be like more of an ego thing than anything else. But as nonsensical as this whole game was, I had a lot of fun playing it. I hope you did too. And I hope you like videos like this because I'd love to try it out more in the future. There's two of my other videos on the screen right now if you're new here and you want to check them out. I have a new podcast called The Fellowship Covenant Podcast and we posted the fifth episode this morning and you don't need to watch the rest to check it out. So just click the link below and check out the podcast episode. Let me know what you think. And you should also check out my second channel linked in the description below. I post there basically every day unless I'm here or or on the podcast. There's going to be a lot of videos on that channel through the rest of the year, so make sure you check them out. Finally, all my socials are at Nick is not green on Instagram, Twitter, and wherever else you want to find me. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.